This podcast is rated E for explicit. Dear love interests, are we written in the stars or are we on different planets? You from Venus, me from Mars, or is there something more that binds us together on this earthly shore? Something in the heart, not found on matters of the chart. Dear love interests, while you look for compatibility in the stars, when you get back to Earth, let's talk about those scars. You met me in the midst of many things. Shedding skin, sprout wings, looking at life as a spiritual being through a human lens, having conversations with God about so many things. This show is your invitation. The Poet God is the conversation. Have your beliefs about astrology led you astray? Did you miss your match because of their birthday? When signs do not align, the search for compatibility may be something you have to look deeper to find. Consider as we start, what happens when matters of the heart don't align with matters of the chart? As the members of the board and I assembled for this conversation, we came to it with open minds, open hearts, as well as our own theories. But I wanted to start by asking, in theory, does someone that leans heavily on the charts for guidance leave you a bit leery? Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) No, I mean, you know, I'll go ahead and and go out on the limb and kind of get my position, too, is that I I, I'm a non-believer. So it is it is very difficult for me to listen to it being treated as if it's the only thing. Right. And I do understand that, that, you know, there is validity in a lot of the, the, of the stuff, but I feel like it's way too rigid the way most people come at it. And if somebody is really heavily and that's the only thing that they're thinking of, they're discounting the fact that we're actually human beings with different aspects to our personality. Mm-hmm. So I'll just, I'll start with that. I won't go too deep into what I think until we go into some other topics. Yes. I was going to, I was going to piggyback off of that is, uh, it's lack of accountability. That's why I wouldn't do it uh-huh. because now. You you know you don't it's, it's the, the, because the sun is right now up to the left. <laughs> the reason why I'm acting like an asshole right now when you know <laughs> take accountability. That's why I wouldn't do it because when you leave it to so especially so external, right now you don't have you have no responsibility to correct that. That's exactly or to yes. try to improve on that mm-hmm. that, that uh, thing. So no, nah, I don't want I wouldn't want nobody that deep into um, yeah. into astrology. Yeah, mm-hmm. I. I don't know. I look at it that I don't use it to weigh my relationships, like who I'm going to interact with based on their signs. I don't follow horoscopes um, because that's, oh, you're looking, oh, how is my day going to go today? No, I don't. I don't (laughs) go into all of that. And they'll tell you. (laughs) Yeah. But I do think there is as far as some of the traits of people's personalities um, that a lot of that to me does follow astrological signs to a certain extent, but Mm -hmm. I've never used an astrological sign to determine whether I was going to engage with you or not, um, or be in relationship with you or not. But I do think there is something to where you fall and maybe some of your core traits Mm -hmm. and things that make you up. Um, So I follow it to that extent, but that's, that's about Okay, and that, uh, before, w- would you ever go as far as to say that there is a wrong sign for somebody? Like, like you know, uh, Virgo is wrong for Pisces, for example, or something like that. 
Tell the truth, shame the devil. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think if I had, if I followed it, it might have, might have kept me out of some relationship. <laughs> um, and so that I is, will that say super it to valid that, to me, though. But that's, oh, that's but that's funny. being on, that's hindsight being what it is. Right. But in some, I'm like, oh, you know what? Come to think, you know. Uh-huh. And but. I, I'm typically I'm a type of person. I think we had we had this conversation that I said um, I date somebody and it's like I can tell like mm, I don't know when we gonna break up, but I know why we gonna break up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh my God. you know, because I will I will pick up on things about their personality that I know I'm like uh, that just doesn't jive with me. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, hindsight being what it was, you look and I'll be like you know. Like, like I would just tell you the one farthest from me mm-hmm. is a Taurus and I've only dated one mm. in my entire time. Mm. And then I was like, yeah, that's why I've only dated one. <laughs> um, and it is, it's somebody, it's like the, the worst connection for me. Mm-hmm. So, so but yeah, so never, have remember? never used it. But like I said, in hindsight being what it is, I probably should have. So in that particular instances. case, do you remember what the qualities were that was just like a no go for? Um, because they are very, they said relationship oriented, but it was more so kind of trying to really tie you down when you haven't earned that right to tie me down. You know uh. what I'm saying? So and that was and but that's a a quality of theirs is mm-hmm. that, you know, they, they like that closeness and that, and I'm like, no, you ain't earned that with me yet. Mm-hmm. You know, but I felt a lot of that trying to make the relationship more than what it had earned and trying to take up more of my time than what you have earned. I and see. All of that. Um, but yeah, so that was ultimately why I was like, ah, later we get up. It so you, nice and- so you, I guess, so I'm, I'm guessing that translated into you feeling um, stifled. Uh, relish- trying to be, I'm not going to let you, mm-hmm. but yeah, trying to make it such where, mm-hmm. where like, and even so like, because it was just like casually dating that, you know, we were, I see, you know, you but you serious- were trying to make it. I'm like, no, you're not there yet. Yeah. You're not there. But yeah. So, but. So not- do you think that, uh-huh. th- that maybe not that particular person, but if those tra- traits are inherent to Taurus, they, that they could evolve beyond that that i think anybody can evolve okay yeah i think anybody can evolve you have to want to Mm -hmm. i think yeah i think anybody can evolve with with anything you Mm -hmm. just it has to be something maybe that you work at because maybe innately that's just at your core who you are but maybe you can you know anybody can evolve so i'll go back up step back a little bit so i grew up in the religious background. So at, f- at first for me, all I, got, I kind of dismissed all that stuff because mm-hmm. I was like, I'm not even trying to look into, not even touch it. But growing personally with myself, there's nothing wrong with being able to be open to different things mm-hmm. and being able to thought because if you're grounded in where you are, this would be no fair into other things. So for me, good point. So for me, that's something where I kind of, I guess later in life, I kind of started looking into mm-hmm. um, as just for as Lonnie talked about, more for, as on the trait side and seeing if it made sense. So for me, because I'm Pisces, a lot of the traits that I've read about from different people, different sources, they kind of have a same, made sense. It wasn't like somebody saying one thing and then somebody saying something different. Mm-hmm. They all made sense. And then for me, a lot of what they were talking about made sense for me personally. I was like, mm-hmm. okay, this kind of makes sense. And I... And I looked at that, compared that to other people who I knew their signs were and kind of looked to see what the traits were. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the things on those signs made sense for those people too. So I guess going back to when Calvin said he doesn't really, he's a non-believer, I guess I can compare it to maybe the love languages kind of a thing where mm-hmm. it's not exactly a one for the other. Right. But I think it's similar mm-hmm. where these are kind of traits of a person like coming from an external kind of a thing and something maybe as Lonnie was talking about before, if can, can people adapt or move beyond what they were quote unquote given? Right. And that's, I think it's possible. I, I want to touch on one thing cause I, I did use the word belief on purpose. Um, it is really, I, I don't have the right. And I, I hope other people who are similar ha- can receive this message 
I don't have the right to invalidate what somebody else believes. And I feel like, you know, your belief of, of how these things work together is personal, right? And you're going to find value where it is. Just because I don't believe doesn't mean you can't or shouldn't, right? So I want to make sure that that's super clear. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, I come from a part, I'm a lot, I'm very, very much about scientific, right? So that's, that in, informs a lot of what I do. Mm-hmm. And for me, I have a really hard time feeling that any person born within this 30 day period is just alike in terms of personality. I think they may be similar. They may be 50% alike, but the way it's been brought to me all my life is that you are Virgo, you have to be this. And I can prove them day in and day out that I'm not those 10 things that you have on your list. I may have five of them, but so is the person who's a Pisces may have five of them as well. That's where that's the scientific method that goes through my head is like I can disprove the fact that I have to be that. But that doesn't mean that I don't think there's any validity to it. I just am not a full believer of that. This defines my life. I had somebody ask me, is your mother a Pisces? (laughs) Before they even want to talk to me. Oh, shit. And that was somebody that you talk about who was really deep into it for them. They were like, I'm not even talking to you. Not me. Are you a Pisces? No. Is your mother a Pisces? <laughs> See, and that's, that's exactly what I was talking about. That's See, the too deep part. That, like anybody who's too deep into that. And I, my, you block yourself my question would, to them would have been like, okay, so were you breastfed? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, no. I think that is that is that is a very similar value because there yeah. is the people who are around it's like uh-uh, I, you've had formula all your life. Not, you obviously didn't get the right nutrients, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's the too heavy. Yeah, that's definitely too heavy. That, right that's there. that's yeah. awesome though. But, you know, if, if for people who go down that road and far down that road, I'm wondering well. When you're assessing and making these assessments, where does the fault line lie between the astrological uh, signs and the characteristics of the person that came from, you know, how they were raised and maybe if they were breastfed or not, Um, you know, (laughs) those things, you know, like, how do you decide, well, this influences this and that influences that, Mm. you know? So I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I. I don't know, but I don't know. I think everybody is a little bit of always nature versus nurture, mm-hmm. always. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, like I said, I I think you can't put people, like you said, into boxes. Mm-hmm. So you can't put people into boxes. So I, but I think the astrological signs, like I said, I think sometimes it's the the traits. And like you said, you may have five out of the those ten, right? Um, but. I, I don't know. It's I just think that it's it helps sometimes when you meet people um, and maybe you read and say, oh, OK, maybe that explains why they are a little bit of you know this way or a little bit of that way. But I think you still have to take that plus whatever else that person is bringing to the table, because that's everything that makes that person up. Mm-hmm. Um, and some of it, like you said, is some of it is going to be, oh, OK, you this is maybe you were you know, raised and not, didn't have, you know, parents that Mm -hmm. were loving. And so maybe that's why you're a little distant and it's not because, oh, because you're a cancer or a Pisces or a Virgo or whatever. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it's just, sometimes, like you said, it's just the traits. Like Mm -hmm. you see certain characteristics, certain traits and you're like, oh, okay, that kind of makes sense. Right. Um, But I don't think by any means you should use it to define who you're going to associate with or be with. And to me, if you do find or run across somebody that says, oh, well, you're the run, you know, <laughs> just run. Yeah. because that tells you it's going to every, you know, to me, if you're following it that hard where you say, oh, I, I can't engage with you because you're this sign or you're this or we're going to have this. Oh, yeah. Just, you know. Run that tells this, me yeah. you basic. Yeah, yeah. I, I do have run. a question though because I have wondered where the balance line mark. Because I think you made some great points. Is that there are, there are personality traits that you know nature versus nurture, all that stuff. But where do you find the balance of saying you know I believe this about their astrological sign, and I will bring up the fact that this great article that that Akil sent talks about. It's not simply the sun sign that everybody associates with, because that's what everybody says. But there is also your moon sign. There's your rising mm-hmm. sign. They all contribute. But where do you find how do you how do you separate? Find the guidance from looking at that versus, OK, now I need to evaluate the person based on their history and blah, 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 mm-hmm. blah. You know? mm-hmm. 
and also how they show up. If yeah. you give them, if you if you've given them a chance to display that to show you that, which is you know to that's why you know like what Gary was talking about. It irritates me where people in their first conversation, say you're on your first date and they want to talk about your what your mother's sign was. <laughs> I haven't even gotten the chance to display who I am to you. Yeah. But you already want to use this to paint a picture on me be- before we even get to that n- naturally. Right. Or, or, like they're or, racing to assumptions already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, I need to hurry up and get this thing. Yeah. But I, I wonder if this societal uh, hyper-focus on on this uh, this whole thing this idea is is based off of people wanting to um assess other people and 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 using that as a a wall for themselves well i'm going to assess you but you're not going to get to see me right and this is focused on what your what your thing is and and not them because i feel like when i encounter somebody like that it's it, the focus is on you it's it's on it's like you're being interrogated based off of all of these questions and because you know you're not necessarily thinking the, ter- the terms that they are it doesn't come from you with the same force right so it, it feels very one-sided yeah and i i, I want to challenge that just a little bit in mm. turn because i i understand that's your perspective but i i, I, I question the people who follow horoscopes that's mm. not about somebody else it's mm. about themselves so mm. you know i'm just wondering I, I guess my my question really overall is 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 just in that that this vein here is you know what is that balance there with how much of it that you're you're projecting onto other people versus you're using to actually help guide your own life Mm -hmm. you know because i do feel like those horoscopes are there for a reason they're not i i don't think that that we would have had horoscopes for thousands of years without a reason for them to be there Mm -hmm. right you know and so i feel like there is some of that some there's some self reaching thing Mm -hmm. going on as well as the outward thing that says i'm going to define you but i wonder where the balance is between how you define other people versus where what you're doing for self-improvement right this kind of goes back to the point i made earlier that i met somebody and during our first initial conversation they were like so is your mother a pisces right out of the block i think within within 10 minutes of a conversation haven't even met the person face to face this was just a conversation so yeah i felt that it was a weird question and kind of a somebody put me in a box for whatever reason in their mind if my mother wasn't a pisces that means that i was out of sight of the dead box of what a match made for whatever reason if i said no which my mother's not <laughs> <laughs> but i think i said yes just to see just to carry on right but we didn't get any, we, we didn't get deeper into it but i was like i want to see like what their what what was the but w- when i said yes they continued asking general questions. So I think it was like a pass for them. But in my mind, it was like, it was a no. Because <laughs> I was like, if this is what you're thinking, I'm not having no further right. conversation with you moving forward. Because so, you saw another sign. Right. <laughs> a crazy <laughs> sign. Yeah. Run sign. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think that Lonnie said earlier, it's like, when you see this, run. Right. We'll be right back after these messages. What, what is it that these people are looking for? Mm. I mean, because it sounds to me they're just looking for a big dick. Listen, so much has been attached to the black penis. Our values, our ideas around what it means to be more or less of a man, our fantasies, and as history shows, our fears. When white people have a belief system that the role of a black person is to bring them pleasure, Mm -hmm. is to make them happy, is to fulfill Mm. whatever need or desire it is that they have. Mm -hmm. And that Mm. message gets passed down generation to generation, and it shows up in different contexts, but it's the same shit. They castrated us. Mm. And the reason why they castrated us was because they were in fear of the big black penis. We unpacked a lot in this episode. Press play, sit back, because it's a heavy load. Listen to Past the Black Penis, Season 3, Episode 2. And after you follow the Poet God podcast on your favorite podcasting app, a quick search of the Poet God on Twitter and Instagram will connect you to just what we have on tap. And if you're not that social, at thepoetgod.com, we got your back. If you're of a certain age, you might remember this Oprah Show promo from the early 90s. Four o'clock. Where's the 
It's from an era when my journey began as an 11 year old with a past I needed to untangle. That's why 4 p.m. was special to me. The Oprah show helped me find a new way to be. And today it informs the lens through which I see the Leaving Neverland documentary. It's a difficult conversation to have, but I challenge two friends to take this journey with me of unpacking a complicated history. I did not want to watch this documentary. Oh, and they weren't all that excited about the conversation, but... And then I was like, okay, it's going to be a long it's not like part one and part two. I was like, God. I think you'll find they rose to the occasion. I said the same thing, by the way. I was like, <laughs> I'll watch it. And I was like, it's four hours. <laughs> I was like, no, I got to put my mind into this if I really want to watch this. So listen to both episodes of Oprah's On and let's take a journey down memory lane. Stop in the middle at 200 Heroes a poem inspired by the Oprah Show event I participated in about 200 male survivors of sexual abuse. Then strap in for what remains as we celebrate just how far we came. Have you been shot down because of your sign? Before you hit play, did they say, rewind? I guess that's just another sign of the times. To me, the people that deal with horoscopes on a daily basis, or to me, those are the scary people. Um, because you're letting something that you're reading in a newspaper or something that you're reading online dictate your expectations of your day. Or, or get in this like, no, so that's that's to me is kind of scary. And like I know Dante was saying, sometimes it it may be positive, but other times it may be oh, are you going to have a conflict with such and such a person? You know, so are you bringing that on, or because you read it, or is that really what was just going to transpire in your day? So the the hard so I, now I used to read them years ago, but because I said I'm like eh, this is bull hockey. What are you talking about? And you would read. I used to read one from different area, and they would say different things. I'm like, wait a minute, if I'm the same sign, why are all y'all saying something different? <laughs> right. You know, so I stopped doing the, the horoscopes. And, and, um, and I wonder if it takes a little bit of your power away, if it's going to tell you how your day is going to go. Mm. But where is your personal responsibility and exactly. shifting that right. energy and deciding what, what how you're going to show up? Yeah. But I, I can't, I've never had somebody, um, and maybe because I'm a, I'm a female, I've never had a guy come up to me. Although I, you know, I've just, I've had people say, oh, I'm gonna make you love me, crazy stuff like that. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I've never had somebody, especially a guy, like come really in and ask me, like, oh, what's your sign? You know, you know, most of the time, if I have this conversation, it's usually another female, which is generally having this conversation about, you know, but yeah, I've never had somebody come up and a guy, I guess, come up and pigeonhole or say, oh, what what, what sign are you? And oh, yeah, well, you and I are really compatible. And I'm like, mm, that remains to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, but I, I can see that people, to me, I think people try and, like you said, pigeonhole people too much. And, and it's just like the, the whole, like we, we were talking about love languages. Yeah, it's a supplement. It's just a part of who that person is. Mm -hmm. Should not be the end all be all. It's just a supplement to help kind of understand that person a little better. It's not mm -hmm. everything because they can still be cray cray just because they a Virgo and a nice kind <laughs> soul. They can still be a little cray cray. <laughs> they can be all of those things. <laughs> no, I mean because I, I agree with. That. I think that that there's a there's a lot of um. Oh, there's a lot of nuance there. And then, you know, you were talking about, you know, the fact that you know, you feel interrogated and I, I personally do. Um, and I, I really feel like, you know, you're, instead of asking me about myself and this is, this may be the question I, I, I you know, instead of asking me about myself, you're asking me about these traits, but for them, they may be actually thinking they're asking me about myself mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the assumption is that I identify that way. Right. Mm -hmm. And I don't necessarily identify by my astrological sign. So I, 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 I don't know if that's just, a disconnect between people not having this being on the same communication wave mm -hmm. or if that's something where it really is about them 
needing to know all these questions to get the uh, uh, answers to all these questions before they can actually interact with you. Mm. Have you ever thought it was an excuse that some people use to avoid doing the real work that needs to be done in a relationship? Very much so. Very much so. Uh, just due to that fact, Luke said, if I, because now, like I said, you always have a reason for it to not have what you want. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Instead of really taking ownership of it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, I mean. I, but I definitely think you're right that sometimes people tend to use that as an excuse. Well, it's just because you're a Virgo. I can't, I can't deal with you. Right. <laughs> or even on their own. Well, you know, I'm a Pisces, you know, babe, I'm, I forget things like, like what are you going yes. to do? So, like, I forgot about that angle yeah. too. <laughs> if I can use it on myself, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Right. Yeah. Like, no, this you is forgot because you didn't write it down. Like, <laughs> 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 it got nothing to do with your sign. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I mean, and, and I guess the other question i have about that question is that it, it are we talking specifically just about you know like uh rom romantic relationships or whatever is this an in a general thing i th um, i think I that's a know. general thing okay mm -hmm. um but i think more s focused on th that r romantic scenario okay mm -hmm. see i've been shot down a couple of times just because of my sign oh, <laughs> so no, that's another no. reason why i don't like it too oh person. really mm -hmm. yeah like yeah. like once they're like pisces oh nah and oh my God. because it was it was one person he had, like uh we were they were talking about it and the uh beyonce song signs happened to come on uh -huh. and she says and uh she doesn't deal with a Pis she doesn't um deal with pisces because she's been hurt and then missy ellie rewind <laughs> she doesn't deal with a pisces i'm like yo like and it's like that i've i've experienced that so i've been the fact that i've been like cut off and already like you said, fully boxed wow. in, you know me. Like, you know what I mean? I was like, no, nah, I, I don't like that. I wouldn't do that to wow. anybody. So I won't. <laughs> oh, she was just a member of the Beehive. So yeah, that's been, been a couple, it's been a couple times. So wow. like, you know, like that when they just hear what you are, like they've already like, they'll choose wow. like, okay, I, let me, now I'm going to get defensive now because yeah. I was told that, you know, our signs don't, you know. Okay. So yeah. does this, does this give way to kind of what I just said that maybe it's more a female thing than maybe a male thing because like I said I I've never had a man come to me <laughs> and present from a sign perspective I've never had that but now I've the conversations that I've had regarding signs have been with other females and mm -hmm. so for you to say that oh you have females come to you and say oh no I don't deal with you because you're this um that is so basic but it is but <laughs> but but oh, understand understand that when I'm when I'm when I moved here, which was many moons ago, that I found the, oh, no, I can't say that. But there's a lot of basic. <laughs> <laughs> basic bitches? Yeah. Mentality you can say that. You know, there's a lot of, I mean, because what I found was so weird when I first started going out, like, to clubs now and going out in Atlanta. Now, I go out to a club to have a good time. Uh -huh. I don't go out to a club to meet you, to talk to you, to be picked up by you, nothing. Right. So you can't come to me talking about trying to get a drink. You're not going to be able to talk to me on the dance floor because I'm trying to listen to whatever the song is and dance. I'm not trying to talk to you. Mm -hmm. But what I found when I would go out here is that listening to a female's conversation, oh, what do you do? Where do you work? What do you, it's like a resume. Mm -hmm. They were asking for a resume. So nothing about the person that you are mm -hmm. it was all about what do you do you know what kind of money do you make what do you do whatever so then to me that gears towards okay then maybe they're throwing in that astrological sign and saying oh what do you do what kind of money do you make what sign right. are you? um and then i'm gonna eliminate you because oh you're you're on the far end of the spectrum and i don't know so basic you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying so you're not bothering to delve into who the person is because if hey fast forward them women are hating it because they if they listen to the, the, what's the name of the podcast that he was on before? Uh, like, sexually speaking? They're like, damn, look what I missed out on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, a pleaser. You know, he's a, he's a pleaser. You missed out on it, ladies. You missed out on it. So if you pass on him, you look what you missed out on. Oh, so that's what God, I'm saying. So I'm you dead. have a lot. So maybe that's what they're throwing in. I'm sorry, Dante. But, you know. <laughs> but, hey. I, I'm so happy we're getting this perspective. <laughs> Because yeah. we couldn't have made this up. <laughs> <laughs> Not this bunch of dudes over here, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, so maybe mm -hmm. it's like I said, I think maybe it's... Uh and 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 I will say maybe it's that women maybe we're we're not doing the work to try and find out what guys are about. So maybe here's my follow-up question to what you just yeah. said. So do you think women miss a lot of red flags because they're so focused on signs, those who are? Well, I think men, women, we have a, 
I think you first have to know what your red flags are mm -hmm. because I, I, I was Dante and I had this conversation and I was telling him, I said, I didn't know they were called red flags mm -hmm. until, you know, that term is a more recent term, mm -hmm. but I knew it, if they did something that didn't set well with me, then mm -hmm. that's something that bothers me. Um, so, but I think women have a tendency to look over, especially if you're asking the wrong questions, especially mm -hmm. if you're asking, oh, what do you do? How much money do you make? What part of town do you live in? Um, what sign are you? Mm -hmm. You know, then you're missing out on, okay, yeah, maybe he has all of these things for him, but maybe he's an abuser and you just mm -hmm. don't realize that because you're so busy focused on how much, you know, he's got in his bank account and not the type of person that he is. Right. So I, I think that they women have some women have a tendency to forego and not look at red flags because they're trying to look for other things that don't really matter. Right. When in the grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. So. And, you know, I, that's a as podcast you were saying, for a whole nother day I know. That women miss <laughs> a red flag. Oh, my God. Are you as, writing this down? <laughs> <laughs> as you were saying that, I was thinking, you know, your pe people who are having that conversation they're probably not thinking in terms of asking him what his ideas around love is and what his, mm -mm. you know, you're his, asking only the surface, <laughs> barely, barely on the surface. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and it it's a whole lot of other questions. But in but in your ask. questions, you're certainly giving a lot of answers about you. Yeah, <laughs> questions yeah. I weren't even asked, but you're yeah. answering them. Yeah. You know, yeah, so true. reading the article, it really shed some light on me that, you know, one of the, the problems that I've always had with people who talk about horoscopes is they really do focus in on it being on all all absolute. And the article even talked about the fact that most people talk about their sun sign, which is what everybody says, but nobody's taking into consideration the other things like their moon sign, and their mm -hmm. rising sign. Mm -hmm. And all of those play a role in personalities and outcomes. Mm -hmm. I like the idea that even the people who really practice this, the mm -hmm. ones who are coaching others are saying that you cannot use this as an absolute thing. This yes. is a part of mm -hmm. your, any kind of determination you're making about a person. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was really happy for me to just hear that from somebody saying, we have to take your star chart. We have to take this, you know, whether or not you're born in a full moon, all of these things are a part of that. So it can't be just oversimplified. Right. Um, and the fact that there is still personal choice, right? I, I thought it was interesting. The bottom line, they said that anybody can love anybody else, right? But what the, the, the signs do for you is to help you kind of predict whether or not it's going to be successful. Mm -hmm. And that's Guidance. a perspective that I'd never heard before, mm -hmm. right? So it was really refreshing for me. Yeah. This kind of goes generally to human perspective of things. We... And not just specific to horror schools, just generally speaking, we like to dismiss people for certain things. Cancel. You're canceled. <laughs> because <laughs> I'm going to remember my point now. I'm not going to get cut off. I'm going to try to remember my point. <laughs> so um, it's like somebody dismissing you because you're black. Mm -hmm. Somebody dismissing you because you're gay. Somebody dismissing you for something else because in their mind, they're, they're, stop, they're dismissing you because of these things or boxes that they have that they have in, your, in their mind, in their mind, well, because of this, I'm having no interaction with you because of this. I'm not going to try to get to know you because in my mind, you're deficient. You're not a Pisces. You're not a Taurus. you have deficient in something, so I'm going to dismiss you. And it, it's tough. With, it's in horoscopes, but it's just generally speaking, we just we generally try to do that to people for whatever reason, mm -hmm. and it, it's, it's, it's a bad thing. And we we talked about that earlier in our little banter with past the black penis mm -hmm. being dismissed for a whole nother reason. Mm -hmm. Just you not you don't look a certain way. And Calvin and I has, have had many conversations about what people people's expectations of you based off of what you're what they think that it would mean because you're six foot and you're black mm -hmm. and you're a man and what's supposed what, what you're supposed to be quote unquote working with. So that's you know. That's another way that we dismiss people um, or make assumptions about people and then dismiss them if they <laughs> don't live up to that. I'm still laughing about the question about, is your mother a Pisces, though? I mean, like, yeah, I mean, that I is extreme to me, a extreme way of using this, right? Mm -hmm. Because it, it, it definitely dismisses the person, right? Mm -hmm. Right in front of you. The right person right in front of you. Yeah, they weren't even concerned about me. What's, what's your mother's sign? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Because it somehow trickles down from yeah. that to you to them some way in their eyes. Like, you know what I mean? What it's funny because then they wonder, like, why am I still not finding mm, that one? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, you know, exactly. Same one exactly. That yeah. That's a good point. Because, <laughs> bitch, you not that one. <laughs> <laughs> You're you know, crazy. You've, yeah, you've put together such an impossible set of statistics. And then, like you said, you don't, you don't pay attention to the, the ones that are really vital to you. you right. Know, so. That combination is a recipe for <laughs> this is bitterness. Terrible. Yeah, exactly. I'm done. And another part of the article that I thought was interesting, they did they did some some chats with different couples and their comparisons about that. But beyond the the specifics about those, I, I thought that one good conclusion that they talked about was the fact that knowing each other's signs or whatever mm-hmm. was actually being able to help them. Um, what you know, basically discover each other and evolve, mm-hmm. right? You know, back to that question about that you asked about can people evolve, right? It, now, I, I obviously wasn't in this conversation was about love language, but I feel like it's a it's a continuation of the same type of thing, Definitely. right? There, they, even the, they, with them knowing each other's signs and stuff, they were using that as a way to help understand, you know, where parts that they may need to do, but it, they they didn't use it as a an absolute. Mm-hmm. So I was going to say, so using it as I guess a, as a catalyst to promote getting to know someone better or understanding them and not as a deterrent. So I guess, like you said, if you use your power for good and not mm-hmm. evil, but you know, yeah. So it, it should be, cause you never know somebody, you know, that's maybe on, like you said, Oh yeah, it says I shouldn't date you, but mm-hmm. I really like you. We got a good vibe. We got it, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's, like you said, it, if you delve too much into it, you just have to learn to take people at, at, face value and to me it's just the surface of who that person is it's never the end all be all for who they are yeah and i think this whole conversation has really helped me understand a little bit more because like i said as a non-believer i just have always wondered what really what defines this what makes people so strongly tied to these and how do they use this in a in a regular regular everyday experience so appreciate you all sharing your perspectives for me so are you a believer now I can't really say that, but I understand empathy. That's that's, 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 that's it. Right? <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> for those of you who have been guided by astrology in your search for love, where does your journey start when you find that the matters of the heart don't align with the matters of the chart, or does it quickly end? Is the love interest then limited to be just a friend? Email us at listen at thepoetgod.com and subscribe for more. Check out our previous episodes because there's so much more in store. I'm Akil Johnson, the poet god. Thank you for listening.